everybody, welcome to another default root tech vid. Um, today we're going to be discussing a very basic configuration for BGP. We're going to set up a relationship between uh, two routers as a IBGP, so R1 to R2, and a set up an IBGP neighbourship, and then between R2 and R4 we're going to set up an EBGP uh, relationship, and the scenario here, just to get your head around things, is we're AS65001 and um, these are these are our routers and we've just signed our contract with with our, our new ISP uh, and that's their AS number 65002 and uh, one of their routers now the rest of the topology is for later what we'll do is we'll add to this tech video with uh, further scenarios where we uh, find that we want some fault tolerance and then get another router from our uh, into into our network and another one from the provider and then we have uh, so dual dual routes coming in here do a bit of load balancing preference preferencing routes about which one we want first uh, we do conditional advertisements we do um, non-exist maps we do default route originate and uh, we do route manipulation using things like origin and um, uh, AS path length and uh, all that good stuff. But for today, we're just going to be discussing basic IBGP EGP configuration and uh, we'll take it from there. So let's have a look what we've got already. I've configured R1's um, Fast Ethernet Zero interface, which connects to R2. I um, haven't configured R2 yet, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So in R2, uh, the we go in the here and Let's just pop our LAN address in here, and uh, let's have a quick ping just to make sure that's that's come up. That's great. So that's uh, R2 to R1. So uh, let's configure the ISP link now. So normally, when you go ahead and you get uh, comes connectivity to an, to an ISP, they'll give you a 30-bit uh, mask. So that allows you to have two hosts plus the network plus the broadcast, and um, that's the way they can serve IP address registration. So we're going to follow the same sort of rules um, because we might as well. We should really because you know it's just a demonstration, but we should try and keep that as close to reality as possible. So we'll have an IP address here, 24111, and we'll give a 30-bit mask, 252. Let's just uh, take that out. And R4, uh, same, same there. Um, 24112. That's the only other IP address allowed in that, in that 30-bit mass network. So 255, 255. Whoops. 252. And we'll no shut that. Just wait for that to come up. And then we'll just do a ping of 24111, which is our R2's uh, interface connected to us and uh, great so we've got comms there that's super um, right so let's go ahead and configure BGP now what you'd normally do is um, you, you get this right first in your LAN and then you do the connectivity to the internet because obviously you don't want to be doing anything you uh, anything crazy with BGP straight away so let's just get the uh, the inside part working first okay so just like a normal IGP and um, the keywords configure BGP's router uh, let's use the context help again question mark just to see what options we've got here so we uh, in our other tech videos we've used uh, OSPF, we've used RIP, we've used EIGRP um, and today we're going to be doing BGP so there's the keyword so root of BGP uh, let's see what comes next and uh, so we've got autonomous system number from 1 to 65 535 and um, so so to get your AS number you have to go to your local registrar um, here in here in Europe, I, I, we're in the UK, so we we go to our local registrar, and they're ripe, and um, the ripe the ripe guys, uh, you you apply for your AS number and for your IP uh, space, IPv4, or IPv6 space, and uh, they allocate that uh, that number in those IP addresses to you, and they're unique to you. So that's the that's the key with this autonomous system number. It's unique to you and your organisation. So you need to go ahead and get that uh, get that registered if you want to operate BGP on the uh, on the internet. We um, we obviously haven't got one uh, because it's a demonstration today. So um, luckily there are some reserved autonomous system numbers, 
from, if I remember rightly, 64.512 to 65.535. Um, so we're not going to start at 64.512 today, we're going to start at 65.001, only because um, that's that's the AS number most people choose because um, it's uh, it's easy to remember with the uh, 001 on the end rather than 512. But anyway, it doesn't it doesn't matter what you choose as long as it's in the private AS number range. Uh, you're you're good to go. So uh, root of BGP 65001. Hit return, and now we're in the subset of uh, BGP configuration, and those are all the commands available to us. So all we're going to do today is configure uh, an IBGP session with uh, with R2, who's our other router in our in our AS. So let's go ahead and do that. So the keyword we need is is neighbor. And uh, you see here we've got some choices now. So neighbor address, neighbor tag, and the neighbor IPv6 address. So we're only reading IPv, IPv4. So uh, we're going to be using uh, an IPv4 address. So we'll do neighbor. And remember, root 2's IP address was 123.1.1.2. So neighbor 123.1.1.2. And uh, these are all the options open to us, but we're just doing very lightweight, very easy IPGP configuration right now. So the only keyword we really need to configure is remote AS. So uh, our our local AS, if you remember, was 65001. And R2's still in our AS, 65001. So R2's remote AS number is also 65001. Now the reason the the reason for that is we're, we're, we've got the same autonomous system number, and um, therefore we're, we're under the same autonomous control. That's the whole reason for having uh, autonomous system numbers. And um, by by configuring the 65001 here in the remote AS, tells uh, tells the iOS software that this is an IBGP uh, scenario because the remote neighbor has the same AS as me, therefore must be the same as me, therefore same autonomous system, therefore. IBGP, internal BGP. So that's one side of the neighbourship configured. Let's go to R2. We'll do the same thing here. We go to BGP 65001, and we've got neighbour 123111 this time because we're going from R2 to R1. Remote AS 65001 again. So here we've got our um, AS number 65001 and the neighbour's AS number 65001. Therefore, IBGP. So that's the neighbor configuration uh, in. All we have to wait for now is the um, BGP relationship to be built. And if I'm quick enough, because I've totally forgotten, if we do a debug IP BGP events and just wait around, um, as the BGP session is built, we'll be able to see that happen. There we go. So um, that's, you'd, you'd see that you'd see that statement anyway. But uh, all this other stuff is uh, is all is all building. I'm I'm waiting. I'm building sort of IPv4 BGP configuration state uh, stuff, debug stuff. On R2, you can see that the neighbor is is up. Let's just run some show commands on here. So we've got show IP BGP uh, summary, which is one of my preferred uh, one of my preferred ones. So show IP BGP summary. This is just to give you a very very quick output to show you what what your uh, neighbourships are, what version you're running, AS number, that sort of thing, how many learned prefixes. See the PFX RCD. So on the on the internet now, you know there are there are like 380, 390,000 BGP routes out there. I can't think the last time I checked. But um, what if this was a router connected to uh, something on the internet, and you're getting a full feed from from a from a transit provider? You'd see this number here in in, in that sort of 380, 390,000 prefix sort of space. But we've we've got none. We're not learning any routes, and um, we can prove that just to do a show IP BGP. So if there were any routes in the table, uh, in the BGP table, they would they would be in there. And uh, if there were any routes in the routing table that were from BGP, they would be in there. And there's nothing, so no routes. Right, so let's configure the um, the IB the uh, eBGP configuration. I beg your pardon now between R2 and R4. So remember, R4 is our ISP. We're going to be trusting them to give us proper internet routes into R2. So let's go ahead and configure that relationship. So uh, BGP 6500. Now, if you remember, so this is our ISP. So that we're 65001, 
our ISP was 65002, a different AS, different autonomous system under different autonomous control, therefore eBGP, external BGP. So router BGP 65002 and the neighbor 24111 was us, remote AS 65001. So now we've got our, our autonomous system 65002, remote autonomous system 65001, different autonomous system numbers. And again on R2, to BGP 65001, which was our local AS number, neighbor 24112, remote AS 65002. And again, we do the waiting game just to wait for this BGP thing to, to build, to be built, and come up. 